let you know. Um, and I quickly wanted to um, introduce the Genesis board members um, that will be presenting today. Um, we've got um, Kelly Brock, Eddie Ariohudian. Did I get that right? You got it right, Kelly. Got it right. We've got um, Kristen Peterson, Farah Tofik, Brett Barker, Sam Andreg, and, and Bree Bakken. So welcome. And Kelly, you can take it right on over right from here. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. It's so cool to see so many great faces. And um, I guess I'll be thankful for COVID-19 because I get to see some of you that I don't get to see very often. So it's good to see everybody. And um, and it's a it's an honor to be here as the chair and the chair of the Genesis Board. Um, and as all of this came together, um, as we were trying to, uh, I serve on both the Zeta Committee and I, I serve as the chair for the Genesis Board. Um, and we were looking at ways to reach our students. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm muted. Well, I'm muted. I'm sorry. Okay. So do I need to start over? I probably wasn't saying anything too critical at that point, but um, it, I'm Kelly Brock and I am here uh, as the chair of the Genesis board. And I um, am excited to be here. It's an honor to be able to see all of you and to be a part of this. Um, I also serve on the Zeta, um, Zeta Cooper committee. And um, when we were looking at opportunities to reach students um, in this very unknown, uncertain time, um, the Zeta Committee was looking at ways to uh, deliver some type of leadership uh, programming to the students and reach our students. And we were trying to do the same as the Genesis Board, because that's really what we're looking to do is to reach our students. And so it was a great connection. And so when we put together this series and we came up with ideas, um, the Genesis Board took this, this, this session specifically. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully you'll be able to see it here in a moment. I do have some slides, um, but they're really more uh, just to, um, well, now you can see my kids. Let me see if I can get my slides up. <laughs> That's not what you're supposed to see, but let me see if I can get my slides up. I'm not supposed to see that either. Okay, let's see. There we go. Okay, can you see those now? Yep. Okay. So we were um, asked, this is really about a conversation to make connections. And so the intention behind this session is really to be interactive. We have a panel of Genesis board members that I'm gonna ask some questions to. I'm really gonna serve as a facilitator. Um, and the topic that we were given was the blind leading the blind and finding strength in numbers. And um, to really kind of talk a little bit more about this as we were thinking through what that really means um, and where this came from, Nikki came up with this idea and what came to my mind when I was thinking about this was a quote that I often hear and that I think about a lot. It's the one by Robert Frost. It's the poem that says, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And this, this poem is oftentimes interpreted very differently by different people, but I think about it from a leadership perspective, because leaders and innovators often take the road less traveled by. Um, I think what's interesting right now is in the world we're living in right now, it's not the one less traveled by. There's just no road. Um, and none of us really know what's going on, what's coming, what's coming our way. Um, and so I think it's really interesting to see where we're at today. So none of us know where we're going. None of us can see where we're going, um, but we're all in this together. And so that's what we really wanted to share with the students. Um, and we wanted to share our experiences and what we've been going through as a bo our board members um, to really kind of just help people understand that none of us know where we're going and we're all working through this together. Um, so you're going to see a little bit of a theme throughout this, the, the slides that I've put together um, because in my house where I've been in quarantine with my children for eight weeks, um, we haven't left the house, um, we have been doing a lot of singing and dancing and watching movies. My daughter loves to perform and her favorite song right now is Into the Unknown. Um, so it's really um, quite, uh, it really plays into what I have been feeling over the last eight weeks, which is like, there's, this is such an unknown time. So we've all gone into the unknown, I think. And so this is the quote by Elsa from the movie. If you haven't seen Frozen 2, you should see it. I can bring Bela in. She can sing for you if you'd like, because she's actually pretty good. But I think it really ties with the, the spirit of Zeta Cooper, which is that, you know, the spirit of Zeta is really to be a trailblazer and to lead through these unknown times. Um, that's what Zeta was known for. And she did a lot of that. And she really did. She was a true trailblazer in setting forth and leading in ways and, and things that we didn't really know. 
Um, so I think um, it fits really well with what we're going to do. But what we're really going to do now is we're going to have a conversation with some of my favorite trailblazers, um, and that's our Genesis board members. Um, these are folks that I've had the privilege of working with for the last number of years, um, Brett and Sam and Farah um, and Bree too. And Bree, I, I should have put you on the list. I didn't know if you were gonna be here. So I apologize you're on the list, but you can certainly join our panel as well. Um, she, she presented yesterday. So, um, and then we have Kristen and Eddie um, who are newer members of our board, um, but I've really had the pri uh, privilege of working with them recently. So with that, I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna let these guys talk. Um, so I would like each of our board members to just do a quick quick introduction of yourself. Um, just tell us your name and your current role that you play um, in, in the world today. Brett, do you want to start? Sure, I can start. My name is Brett Barker, and as the slide said, graduated in 2008, so that number is making me older and older every time we do these types of things. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as far as my role in the world and um, wear several hats all impacted by what we're going through now so I'm sure I'll get into more detail but um, in the pharmacy world I am the vice president of operations for Nucara we're a regional pharmacy chain and then also the corporate compliance officer so as you can imagine um, our response to COVID has hit that quite a bit I also serve on the Iowa Board of Pharmacy and COVID it has, has hit that quite a bit and also I'm the mayor of my community the city of Nevada Iowa and so have dealt with it in that capacity as well. Awesome. And Sam, can you give us a quick introduction? You bet. Hey guys, I'm Sam Andereg. I'm a uh, class of 2011, so I graduated with Farah. Uh, and my current role, I, um, I'll have a couple roles. One is uh, I'm chair of the section of pharmacy informatics at ASHP, so serve in a leadership position there. Just got done writing uh, my chair's message. We do one every hour of the month, so I have to keep everybody upbeat and, uh, you know, lead through writing, um, which is interesting, and also uh, chief executive officer at a company called DocStation, so we're a care management software platform for pharmacists. Awesome, and Farah. Hi everyone, so I'm Farah Tofik. Um, I graduated in 2011 with Sam, um, and I'm director of CEO operations for the United States Pharmacopeia, um, and we've been doing a lot of activity related to COVID. It's, it's been a uh, incredibly transformative time. And uh, you're in my home office right now where I have been since March 13th. Um, so I'm, I'm so excited to be with all of you today. Thank you. Kristen. Hi guys, my name is Kristen Peterson. I graduated in 2017 from the College of Pharmacy, just like Eddie who's on the call with us right now. Uh, right now, I'm actually just rounding off my first year as an inpatient clinical pharmacist. I do inpatient malignant hematology and inpatient bone marrow transplant at Duke University Hospital. Mm -hmm. And I've been called upon to come into the hospital, um, though I get the pleasure of working from home every once in a while. Most days, I'm actually on site at the hospital and helping rule out COVID patients, um, kind of firsthand dealing with a lot of these. I'm very excited to be here with you all today. We're excited you could be here as a frontline provider. So thanks for being here, Kristen. Cool. Eddie, can you give us a brief introduction? Yes, um, my name is Eddie Adhuayan, um, class of 2017 with Christine, just like she said there. Um, current, low, current role for me, it's um, with um, Charles Pharmaceuticals. I'm the director of operations with Charles. And what we usually do is actually bridging the gap between developed countries and developing countries and try to see how you can um, get what is presently available here in terms of medications and medical devices to other countries where they actually needed to. Um, but with COVID-19, that has kind of really slowed down. People can travel, goods are kind of restricted also. And um, besides Charlie, I also work in the community as a pharmacist as well. So I'm able to like still have patients currently and I have been really busy with um, COVID. And I'm happy to be on the call with everyone today. Glad you could be here, Eddie. And then Bree, I'm sorry you're not on the list, but do you want to do a quick introduction too? Yes, absolutely. Um, hello, everyone. 
so my name is Bree Bakken and I am a PharmD graduate from 2015 and I currently have uh, two major roles taking up my time. So I serve as an assistant professor at the MCW School of Pharmacy in Milwaukee. So a lot of my um, time most lately in that area has been rescheduling classes and figuring out how to, how to do everything that we have been doing virtually. And then I also have a practice site at the Children's Hospital in Milwaukee. And so there it's much more frontline managing our staff, figuring out um, what kind of FTE we need and how to shift our resources, both our employees, our PPE, medications and beyond. So keeping very busy on both fronts. Um, happy to be here with all of my colleagues and it's so nice to see so many of your faces as well. So as you can see from these brief introduction, these folks are doing some really great things out there. And um, I look at them as trailblazers and I learn a lot from them every time we're together and in times that we're working together to share back with our students as well. So um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of, we're gonna move into a conversation with these folks and I'm gonna present some questions to them and, and have them go around the table and share things, <laughs> things. And then I want the participants as well to join in. So um, you can do that by joining the chat feature. If you have something you wanna talk about and we're busy talking, just say something in the chat and we'll make sure we address it. If you have questions or comments or whatever it might be, um, or you can raise your hand or you can just speak up. Um, but uh, make sure that we hear you because we want to make sure that um, everybody's addressed here. So uh, it's our point here that we wanna have a conversation. So. What I really want to hear from you guys, and I want—I don't want to spend. We could spend. We could spend the next few hours talking about this, but I would want. I was wondering if you guys could share. Some of our board members could share what you're experiencing. I mean, what has been life been like for you guys over these last eight weeks, um, when this pandemic hit, and what what are you going through on the on the front lines and doing what you do every day? Does anybody want to start? Well, I can. Can I go? Yeah, Eddie, go for it. All right, so um, like I was said during the introduction, uh, besides Charlie's Pharmaceuticals, I actually take my time also to help patients in the community setting. And um, I currently have a role with Walmart, working as a staff pharmacist. And um, since the COVID-19 started, um, the first couple of weeks in, I would say mid-March, all the way to like um, first week of April, it was increased activity. People were in panic mode, and they didn't know what to do. They were thinking, the whole world was going to shut down goods they won't be able to get their medications so everybody started calling and trying to get three months at a time for almost every single medication they could possibly have and that kind of like was a lot of stress on you know pharmacists and also technicians too and i'm working as a pharmacist in the community setting presently you have people who just come in they think that, oh everybody is going to be infectious and people are scared your technicians are scared everyone is scared so some of the roles I have played as, um, I'll say, a leader in the pharmacy, it's just um, trying to be optimistic about what we do, where we are right now. And I also try to use um, the Spanish flu as an example that ha happened back in 1918, um, that um, during that time, yeah, everything was shut down. Churches were closed, schools were closed, businesses were closed, and um, we got through that. And that is one thing that keeps me going. And that is a way I have also like kind of um, encouraged um, some of my employees and um, people walking around me that, um, yeah, we're all in this together. We may not have um, a, blue, a blueprint to follow at the moment, but um, we will surely get through this. So that's one thing I've seen, increased volume of activities and people just um, being scared. And with me too, um, we are all human beings and um, since there are no clear guidelines on what to do, because we were trained to follow guidelines and follow studies. Right now, there's nothing to follow, but we're just um, trusting and believing with so much optimism that we can get through this. Awesome, Eddie. Kristen, how about you as a frontline provider in the hospital? Can you share a little bit about what you guys have been experiencing, what you've been experiencing specifically? Absolutely, and I think on top of just being a new practitioner, I actually started with, there were seven of us who just came out of residency in June, um, and then we're kind of hit in January with actually not having a direct manager anymore. And I'm sure you can imagine the search for that has halted quite a bit with everything that's been going on with COVID. Um, so it's actually been a really interesting opportunity for me because not only am I doing things like, you know, verifying orders for patients who are critically ill um, and having to lean on some of my coworkers to help with that. 
um, going to codes and helping these patients who do have COVID, um, and also just trying to make sure that we're managing their health in the best way possible. But we all have been leaning on each other during this time. A lot of us who don't have a lot of experience besides residency um, and have been able to help each other you know, lead and take on these challenging situations um, like scheduling and trying to rotate inpatient and outpatient. If we have a colleague who falls ill, how do we schedule ourselves around that? Um, like I said, you know, with a lot of us just coming out of residency, we didn't have experience doing this before. So I've actually found it to be a time that, though it has been extremely challenging, especially for a lot of these patients and having to see that firsthand, it's also been very uplifting because a lot of people have been able to come together and really help manage patients in the best way possible. Um, so I just feel lucky to have been part of that as well. But I'm sure you can imagine it's, it's a stressful time in and out of the hospital. Um, and we're always trying to figure out what the next step is and try to be one step ahead of that, whether it's staffing in the hospital, whether it's figuring out how to become a part of more studies so that we can get more patients treated and provide care for them. Um, that's been a really interesting perspective. I'm lucky to have gotten this during my first year of practice. Absolutely. Brett, I see you next underneath Kristen. So do you want to talk about, you've got some unique perspectives as well. Yeah, it's definitely been an interesting time. And I think, um, like you said, it's something that there's really no playbook for, for how to respond. And so in all of my roles, it's you have to make decisions based on the best information you have at the time, knowing it's incomplete. And you also have to make decisions quickly a lot of times because things are were changing very, very fast. So um, I think just understanding that you're, you're not going to get all of them right. Information will change and you have to, you have to be ready to admit that you may, may have made the wrong move and, and adjust as, as you learn more. And I think that's important too, not to be too prideful um, to go, yep, we've learned more and now we're going to adjust and go this way. Um, and then also just the teamwork. I, I look at all the roles that I have and the fact that it impacted every single one could have easily been overwhelming, but having strong teams in all those areas of my life helped significantly too. So um, that was, that was one, one big thing. Um, but, you know, relying on other people, I think about, you know, within the pharmacy world, um, you know, I reached out to Sherry Schmidt at Medicap and said, Hey, we're similar organizations. Let's talk about how we're handling things. We shared some policies. Um, and I think that was helpful to know that there's other people you can bounce ideas off of. So, you know, look at your bond, leaving the bind and strength in numbers, I think speaks to both of those is um, not really? being afraid to have colleagues that you can speak with that are going through it too and kind of talk it through. Um, and just, I mean, just all the new skills that I've had to learn from this too. Um, you know, at the city right now, we have an interim city administrator and then we also are hiring for a communications position. So, um, though both of those roles are very important right now. And so I've been learning how to, you know, stream Zoom onto Facebook and all these, all these things. So I, I kind of joked around that my technology skills got stuck in about 2008 when I graduated. And now I've had to learn how to, how to do a whole bunch of, of new things, um, which has been good. Uh, I, I think we're going to see some benefit from this time. I think we're learning how to stay connected better from a distance. So, you know, think about the Genesis board. We're all across the United States. And tools like this, I think, could, could be helpful for us to be more cohesive as a group. And I think we're all getting more comfortable with it because I, you know, I hated video when this started. Like my sister gave me a hard time. She FaceTimed a couple weeks ago. She's like, you, it's the first time you've ever answered a FaceTime call. And I said, I know, I'm getting used to it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I'm just thinking through, um, I've hit on a lot of, lot of the points, but, you know, at, at the Board of Pharmacy, for example, you know, there's a lot of re regulatory red tape as well. Um, and so, you know, the board, we talk about an issue, come to a consensus, and a week later, we'd get approval from the state to send it out to licensees. And so that was a little bit frustrating because people wanted answers quickly. We'd already decided what we wanted to put out, and then we had to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And so I, I know Andrew Funk probably wanted to pull his hair out going through all the stuff he had to do, banging his head. You know, I, in the new Carol world, it's a lot easier. We can be more nimble. But at the board level, there was just a lot that, that he had to be, be up against. But, um, and then also what we found is not knowing what was coming, we wanted our pharmacists to be able to make good judgments because we can't 
script out every situation. And pharmacists by nature, nature tend to be very prescriptive. They wanna follow that protocol. If this, then here's what I'm gonna do. And we don't have that now. And so what we said basically in the guidance was we expect licensees to make the prudent judgment that a uh, responsible li licensee would make in that sort of scenario based on the circumstances they were in. And a lot of pharmacists are, are afraid to take some of that um, leeway that they were given be because like I said, that you tend to be very, very prescriptive. But we knew we couldn't um, write guidance for every situation our pharmacists were gonna find themselves in. And we didn't want, we wanted the patients to be taken care of before anything else. So the last thing we wanted is for a patient not to get the care they needed because the pharmacist was worried they were gonna get disciplined over some sort of minor rule that right now is difficult to follow. So um, that was a little bit of how we handled it from the board perspective, from the city perspective, you know, we're ultimately, there's several angles there. One, we have to keep our essential city services going. So we, you know, our water, our wastewater, you know, it was very important that we protect those um, key employees that have that training so we can keep the utilities running. So we did a lot of segregation of duties early on. We were very strict on self quarantines um, and things of that nature. Um, but then there's also the PR aspect, you know, we have to um, put out good information, encourage our residents to take precautions. And it's hard because even now things like masks are becoming political and people have this patriotism pride on which, which side they're gonna be on for masks. And, um, but you know, we still try to put out the good recommendations that we're getting from CDC and do some of that public messaging as well. Um, yeah, and then personally, it's interesting because I used to travel a lot. And so now, even though I'm doing more, I feel like, you know, producing things, I have more time on my hands too, um, in a lot of ways. And it's just balancing things. We were on a board of pharmacy call for the board meeting from 9 a.m. this morning. And my daughter lost her first tooth in the middle of the board meeting. She comes running in to tell me she lost her tooth. And it's just one of those things we're all getting used to balancing family um, and integrating as the talk last night talked about integrating yep. family into everything else that we do. So I guess that's a little bit of all the different hats <laughs> and how it's impacted. Lots of hats. Yeah, you do wear lots of hats, Brett. So thanks for sharing the different perspectives. Um, Sam, do you want to share your thoughts? Yeah, happy to. Um, so I think when uh, things first started getting ramped up, um, just trying to sit and, and think about how how it impacts you and you know your role at a company and and uh, overall for us uh, you know the business and the first thing I think about is my employees so um, in the startup world especially you know everyone's reading headlines and seeing how you know people are halting hiring or they're having trouble you know raising money to continue their business and they're worried about job security so uh, that's not something that people are always going to come out and say, but it, you know, you have a sense of what they're feeling. So first, you know, making decisions on you know what you got to do for the business. So um, we discuss, you know, looked at our finances, discussed, you know, if we needed to, uh, you know, take a pay cut ourselves and lower salaries or, or even cut staff altogether. And we we're lucky enough to, you know, have have pretty good financials in place and, and not have to do that. So quelled those fears so people can, you know, get back to you know, not worrying to have to worry about their job, but, um, you know, how do I, how do I now function in this, this new environment? Um, so, you know, for us, we were a remote team, uh, before all this happened. So we were used to being on zoom and, and working from home and kind of working independently. Um, I'd, I'd meet up with, with folks during the day. So limiting that social interaction is, is definitely tough personally. Um, but now when the workday is over, uh, you know, your options are pretty limited in terms of getting out of the house. And so you're spending all of your time in the house. Um, and so, you know, how do you, how do you navigate that? So, uh, one thing I did is I, you know, I used to work up in, in my bedroom, uh, in, at, at my desk. And so, um, I was getting a little stir crazy and did move my desk out of that room and, and down to, you know, this, you know, space, this vacant bedroom. Um, to separate, you know, work and life. And I know Bree talked about that a little bit yesterday, but it really does help mentally um, with that separation. So I'm not in my room for multiple hours a day, um, which is really good. Uh, at, at work, I think, you know, trying to, you know, you, you, you have your day-to-day, -day, but you also want to take time to, 
the break and talk about things that aren't work related and, and, you know, keep the team motivated and, and not have to, you know, just dwell. It's really easy to pull up the news and just scroll through the headlines and then feel like garbage. Uh, and so um, you got to, you know, do your best to keep that spirit up. But I think it's also really important to be vulnerable. I think we're all going through something that's a little tough and, you know, you're anxious and you don't know what's coming. And so, um, you know, as clinicians and healthcare providers that we're trained to be tough and persist and, uh, you know, grit, you know, grin and bear it and get through it. But I think at this point in time, you know, having, having people to reach out to, having calls like this, to be honest, where you can vent and talk about what you're going through and say, you know what, I need somebody to talk to or I need to just hang out and relax a little bit. Um, so I think that's really important. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, and I don't know about you guys, but what do you say? Eight weeks, Kelly, you've been at home cooped up. Yes. We're in week eight of quarantine with my family. Yes. Yeah. And you know, e even going from working from home originally uh, yeah. to this, I had a really bad week the week before last. It, I don't know what I did. I just scheduled a whole bunch of calls and just had a whole bunch of emails come in and lots of new stuff and didn't have time to process. And, you know, it was exhausting and I, I felt off. And so I think it's important to know that, you know, to check in with yourself and know that, you know, it's, it's okay to have a bad week and it's okay to not try to do everything and be everything to everybody. You know, you got to be yeah. kind to yourself so you can be kind to others. Um, and so that was good. It took the next week and, you know, took the mornings a little bit slower and, and tried not to put so much pressure on myself. So uh, I felt like that was a good tactic and something I learned through the process. Very, very important. I couldn't agree more. How about you, Farah? You have a, you bring another unique perspective. Sure. Um, so at USP, my role is to help support the CEO's communications and external engagements. So it's been very, very interesting. Um, right now, USP just turned 200 years old, and we had this, these big plans to celebrate that all throughout this year. Of course, the um, we got through January. We actually had an event in early January in Shanghai. Um, and then when staff came back, you know, shortly after, then COVID happened and, um, and our priority became, you know, ensuring the safety, security of our staff, adapting our operations, and then delivering on our public health mission impact. Um, so for us, it was really important to just make sure that, we were taking care of our staff. We began with that. We started thinking about, and you know, for me as a as someone who was trained as a pharmacist, um, just making sure that communications element with all of our staff becomes a number one priority. So we created this consistent framework for the CEO's messages so that when we're communicating with them, we know what they anchor on. And we've gotten, you know, gr good feedback from them on, you know, here's something that I need more information on. Um, how are we adapting our operations? USP delivers quality standards for medicines around the world. So we have a lot of laboratory folks that have to um, be able to be on site to deliver on their work. So what kind of messaging are we sending to them? How are we ensuring their safety? So, you know, we work through all of these different operations team. We were having 7 a.m. meetings every day with our core operations function. We shared it with our staff. We streamed some of those meetings live so that we can increase that transparency and also model that example. So, you know, best practices for how to do video teleconferencing as we moved 1,300 employees and 80% of those 1,300 began working from home. So really only about 20% of our staff across 13 global sites around the world um, were actually coming on site in our laboratory function. So that was a huge difference. Um, we complete our work through uh, communication with volunteers all around the world as well. So for us, the technology became a critical element. And um, I... Uh, we decided to do a live streamed event where we, you know, we're talking about our, our um, COVID-19 public health response for USP. And, um, you know, I set it up, did all kinds of practice and training. And this was in, in March to make sure that our, our live feature worked. 
uh, come day of and we crash WebEx or WebEx <laughs> crashes. I'm not sure which, but, uh, you know, for me, like a year and two months into my uh, role at USP, or I'm sorry, a year and four months or so into my role at USP and we go live and completely fail after we'd sent out this uh, email to the board of trustees, every convention member for USP on all of our staff. Um, and I was like, okay, this isn't working. We'll send you a recording. That's the last thing people heard before the whole system crashed. Um, so it's, it's not being afraid to, to try new technology, be on the cutting edge. Sometimes it's the bleeding edge and just being comfortable with that has, it was a huge lesson for me. Um, but being a public health organization, uh, what, what really drives me and many of us in pharmacy, that's what drives us is being able to help people, being able to help patients, however we do it. Um, for me, that's how we anchored on our response. So for USP, we made our reference standards, um, our public quality standards available for free. If there is a manufacturer out there exploring a vaccine treatment, we made technical assistance available for free using our USP expertise. We put together, um, based on feedback from NABP about shortages and personal protective equipment very close to pharmacy, um, we issued guidances that showed how you can conserve garb and personal protective equipment. We made hand sanitizer toolkit um, so that pharmacies and distillers can compound um, hand sanitizers in response to the FDA uh, guidance. We began collaborate. We continued our collaboration with regulators around the world. Given that we're a global organization, um, you know, how do we prevent substandard falsified medicines from entering the market? We know as connected as the world is, if a substandard falsified medicine appears in one part of the world, it's only a matter of time before it reaches other parts of the world. So how do we help regulators identify those and pull them out? That's exactly what happens in times of shortages and in times of uh, these kinds of pandemics. So we came forward to present policy papers, background papers, white papers that demonstrate how they can successfully prevent that. Um, and a particular project I am so excited about is our supply chain vulnerability project. So what we're trying to do is use our reference standard demand data to map where medicines are coming from that can help us better identify. You know, by the time something makes it on an FDA drug shortage list, it's too late. There's already been a shortage. And so, you know, for them to be able to, for practitioners to be able to respond is very challenging because you're already hit with a shortage. So how do we proactively work to identify where medicine is coming from and be able to promote geographic diversity. So medicine is, isn't made in one part of the world um, so that we can make sure that we don't run out of critical medicines. So it's one thing that's happened is work-life separation has completely disappeared because <laughs> this is work and this is life. So um, it, it's really, you have to make sure that you carve out time. I'm so driven by my Outlook calendar my boss told me, uh, you know, but I'm going to start sending you invites that say disconnect, exit email, and, um, and, and it's what you have to do in order to be able to find that balance. And these kinds of events just always energize me um, as well. So you just have to anchor to those points um, and, and to get, be able to get through this. Absolutely. And Bree, do you, I know you got to share some things yesterday, but if, you, if there's something else that you want to share with this group, because I know there's some people that weren't on yesterday. She hopped off. Yeah, she had to jump off. Oh, jump. she had to jump off. Okay, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, well, as you guys can see, um, this crew, as I talked about Trailblazers, you can see they're all doing amazing things in all their in all their roles. And um, that's just and I and they all I, they they could probably each talk for an hour or two themselves. And I think that there's lots of things that are happening. Um, I think that um, one of the next questions that I have is again. Here we go back to Elsa, right? <clears throat> In, in the, the theme at the end of the movie, if you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. But if you have, is show yourself, step into your power, throw yourself into something new. We're all in something new right now. Um, and I think what I've really learned is I've, I've learned so much about myself, actually. I, I have been working from home for 10 years and I'm navigating a new world. And, um, and I think that in the midst of all of this, you learn a lot about yourself. 
And so one of the things that I was going to ask our, you know, again, our panel again, but I also want to invite participants to share too, um, is, you know, one of these two things, like what's one characteristic um, that has really helped you the most to deal with this unknown world that we're working in and we're living in right now? Um, or what's one thing that you've learned about yourself that you didn't know that's really helped you kind of navigate these choppy um, and fast waters that we're working in right now too? Um, so does anybody want to jump in and share something there? I guess I can. Um, what was kind of funny is when all this started going down, I had some friends and others say to me, you know, you, you were made for a situation like this. And it kind of got me reflecting for that um, and kind of just being able to deal with the chaos and thrive in that um, is something that that luckily um, is, I, and I don't really know why, but I think it's probably the fact that I've always been engaged and always had a lot that I'm trying to balance. You know, even going back to school, um, I wasn't always the best student in the classroom because I had a bajillion other things I was trying to do. And being able to, to balance all those things and go from one role to the next and manage through that, I think probably helped um, to, to be able to handle all the different things coming at me. Because when this first started, it was, you know, I would, I deal with the city issue, a new care issue, then it's a board of pharmacy call. And I was going from one role to the next all day long, trying to deal with, deal with it. And I think just being able to switch gears was important. Um, and um, being able to just um, to navigate through that and not get overly worked up, I, I think helped too. So as far as the exact characteristic, I'm not sure exactly what I would, what word I would put behind it. Um, but just you know being able to to handle that um unknown um luckily was an area that that i um am, am able to to handle without without getting overly stressed out because um yeah if you're if you're someone that that's going to be stressed out because you don't have a playbook now would i i'm sure it'd be super super hard time but not being able to create and and maybe that comes down to it too there's often I found myself in the area of creating the playbook because I'm trying to do something new and having a new idea. And so right now, you know, we're definitely creating the playbook as we go. Um, I've heard people describe it as building the airplane in the air, all sorts of different analogies to what we're doing right now. Anyone else from the board want to share? What's one thing you've learned? I know you guys kind of shared as we went along too. I think you guys shared some of these things already in well, your... In yeah, well, I will say for me, I kind of noticed that um, words can actually empower people. So just um, being a group of people and then um, you're able to like use some past examples to tell them as a team, we can all come out of this together. Um, I was just reading about, you know, past um, pandemics and what has happened in the past, even post World War II, and how England came up with, you know, their new health um, system, the NHS. And um, it kind of struck me that every, after like every significant, um, I would say, event, something like pandemic, there's always something better that the people get at the end of the day. So I try to kind of use that to encourage people and tell them um, once this we're out of these um, things, we get better with people. And um, just speaking in the side of optimism has been very helpful too. Um, telling people that um, they are not in this alone, that we are all in this together. I think that is something that um, has really, really um, touched a lot of people and they believe, now they are believing. So that is one thing I noticed. I ended up becoming a motivational speaker, just speaking and people just <laughs> believing like, oh yeah, we're really going to come out of this. Maybe that is just because I'm a Christian too. So I believe and I have hope that um, every situation is just an opportunity for you to, you know, come out better and stronger and um, help um, nudge people to the right direction going forward. So for me, um, what I tell people is, yeah, we're all in this, you're not alone. Um, everybody's feeling this, even the CEOs too are feeling this, and we're just looking for a way to come out of this all together. So um, words can really empower people, and that is one thing I found out that I'm doing most of the time, just talking and preaching this optimism. Yeah, and I would just like to bounce off of that too. Um, kind of the connectedness of people is something that has surprised me in such a positive way. Now you look on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn and people being honest and open um, and sharing their experiences has been just very uplifting. 
even though it can be very difficult knowing that there are people going through similar situations, um, whether you're a student and you're seeing other students going through their online classes or taking their online exams, or like me, I have a lot of other friends who I actually might not get to see via FaceTime very much, mainly it's via text. And now we are so open to doing these video chats that we were talking about before. I think more people are becoming open to video. And so getting to see people's faces is really wonderful. Um, and it's very welcomed in a time where you can feel very isolated. Even when I go to work and I'm surrounded by people, sometimes I do feel very isolated because we're all masked up and garbed up whenever we're going to see patients. Um, and just thinking about a certain characteristic that's helped me get through this time um, is just thinking about there's a lot of negativity that's going on. Um, but some of the others alluded to this, that there's also um, a lot of room for you to just have grace with yourself and just say, you know what, I don't have to be on 100% of the time or be productive 100% of the time. Um, you can allow yourself to have that period of just recovering from so much craziness that's going on. Um, I think that that's a really important thing to take away. Mm -hmm. I want to agree. If, oh, sorry, if I could break in here. Nikki Brogdon had to leave a little bit ago too, but she commented and put in the chat that learning to swallow pride when things don't go as planned resonates with me too, especially in trying to coordinate a course while transitioning to online curriculum. So she yeah. probably would say humility. Yeah. 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 Well, For sure. An, an example yeah. of that is our first virtual city council meeting got Zoom bombed. Um, and it, oh, it, and not all the council could see what was going on, but they said, based on your face, I knew what was going on. So I was glad that the camera in the back of the room is oh, from 2007, so it wasn't super high def, so they didn't get my total expression. But yeah, you, yeah. and yeah, you just have to learn from it, figure out what went wrong and fix it for next time. Um, right. But yeah, I, I think not being afraid to make those missteps is, is important. Cause then from there, we learn more about it. And we used to do coffees um, with the community where we'd have five or six people show up and we're like, well, we're just going to do virtual ones. And now we have 2000 viewers. So it's a quarter of our city's population now watches us every Saturday online. And so we're learning wow. things that we're going to carry on after this, um, that, that are positive things to come out of it. So mm -hmm. I think that's another piece, um, is keeping a calm presence for those around you because others will definitely feed off negativity. So I think keeping that as much as you can, a positive outlook, I think is important too. And just understanding that people are hurting right now um, and, and knowing that, um, that they're even giving, giving grace. I heard a couple people say that. Both others grace, I try to keep that in mind. People are really stressed out and I try to give others grace and remind folks around me to give others grace, but also yourself. Um, I've had to be good about telling myself and telling others, okay, I'll get to that, but it's gonna be Wednesday you know, because I'm going to the gym right now, it's going to be a while, and it's going to be this day. So um, things like that, I think are important too, to take, take time and not overburden yourself and being realistic. And, and it's hard. I mean, there are times that I'm like, gosh, I feel, feel like a slacker. I wasn't as productive as I should have been today. But I mean, you're going to have, have days that you're really in the groove and others that you're not. And I think you have to have grace with yourself and not beat yourself up over it either. How about some of our students that are on the line? What have you guys, what have you guys learned? Is there something characteristic? I know you guys are going through a whole, a very interesting time as well. So is there anyone that wants to share something that you've learned or a characteristic that's helping you deal with what you're doing, doing with class or rotations or whatever it might be? I can add, I know I've learned a new level of time management when it comes to using your calendar, sticking to your calendar. It's, I've learned that I can follow it. I, when I was in school, I would kind of push it off. And it's like, oh, I'm not going to, like, I'll plan out my week, but it never turns out to be that way because of X, Y, and Z. But now being at home, it, I found that it was a lot um, easier to follow the calendar. So I switched over to that and it's helped a lot in making sure I get everything done. I can speak for other students when it comes to classes. I've heard a lot of, um, uh, I guess I don't want to use the word negativity, but it unfortunately it has impacted um, the learning curve drastically, and I feel for them. Luckily now I'm I'm a I'm a P3 now, so I I'm done with my core classes, so I don't have to deal much with that now. I'm just getting ready for rotations, which is another area um, of discussion. Of a lot of P3s have gotten the rotations 
cycle one and mine are cycle one and three that are canceled so far. Um, so I'm still navigating, trying to see what to do there, what my options are. They just got back to us today about it. So it's, it's tough, but, um, and I've learned about myself on how upsetting it is to not kind of like what um, Dr. Brogdon said, swallowing the pride of, of saying, you know, this is okay. You'll, you'll be fine. Try to find like the, what good can come out of this. So if my do it end up taking my buy for cycle one, then I can maybe brush up a little more on my acute care areas where I are, is not my forte. So that's really what I've realized, you know, I, that I turn it, the negativity to positivity, like it was mentioned earlier and try to get as much out of the time, the extra time that we've been given. Anyone else? Student? Um, okay. I just want to echo the grace. Some days are hard. Like today, my five-year-old, well, he's six now, my six-year-old running around crazy talking. I'm trying to do NAPLEX practice questions and I kept making stupid mistakes. And it's like, okay, we're going to stop that for now and we're going to do something different. So I started applying for jobs and then it's same so today just ended up being a give myself grace day and I didn't do half of what was on my to-do list, but it's going to be there tomorrow. And this is the last thing on my to-do list that I'm doing today before I just call it quits. So that being flexible and making adjustments as they are needed. I agree, Sonia. I've learned so much about calibrating my own expectations, um, you know, kind of going into this and feeling like I had to accomplish so much in this pandemic and I need to make the most of this. And you know what? There are some days that I'm a leader at home and we're lucky to get through the day and, and that's okay. But I have to learn, I have to, as myself, as a leader and in, in the roles I play and I'm used to doing lots of different things, but I have to just, I have to set my expectations at the right level. Otherwise it can be really overwhelming at times. And so I feel, I feel you, I'm right there with you. Um, and we're, we're hitting some major emotions in my house after being together for eight weeks. We all love each other, but it's, pretty tight quarters um to be together so that long so um, thanks for sharing that because i agree i i whole, wholeheartedly understand mm -hmm. absolutely well we're we're um we got let's move on to the next we're let's talk about you know so we talked a lot about this and and kind of thinking about you know what do we do now right i mean and i think uh, this has come across this message has come across here we go back to uh, this is anna now um and uh taking a step step again it's all that i can do just do the next right thing. And Sonia, I think this really plays to what you were just talking about. Like just what's the next thing I have to do today? And you know, some days you're more productive than others and 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 that's great, but there's going to be times where it might not be that way. Um so, you know, I was kind of thinking about this and I you know, wanted to put out to the board or to really anybody that's on the line right now, you know, what's one thing you wish you would have known before when this all started? What's one piece of advice you'd go back and give yourself? when we started this eight weeks ago or 10 weeks ago or whenever you started this? What's helping you the most right now getting you through? Well, and you hit on something too, Kelly, that I didn't mention earlier. And like, as far as a characteristics that help, and I've always been the type that I look at the next priority on my agenda and I focus on that and kind of ignore in a way everything else. And I think that helps too, not to get overwhelmed, is to look at the next thing you need to do get that done and then worry about everything else. Because if you worry about everything that you need to accomplish, it's gonna to be too overwhelming. So even in school, I'd focus on, okay, what's my next exam coming? Which maybe isn't always everybody's best uh, strategy, but I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna focus on this and I'm gonna be all in and I'm gonna switch gears and go to the next. Because yeah. um, that, that's always been a strategy that, that's helped me is to, to worry about what's the biggest priority. Um, and so basically prioritization, figuring out what the biggest thing is you need to do take care of it, move on to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah, Kelly, I'll, I'll kind of build off of that too, I think. And Brett and everybody's been bringing up great points. I think for me and even for the association, just personally, everything, you, know, you, you quickly, you, we, we've tossed around the word a lot about essential um, in terms of essential workers and, and whatnot. And I think all of us have started realizing that there's probably a lot of if you want to say junk that you've had to deal with in your life um, and it comes down to what truly matters most and what's what's the most essential things for your job for your family for yourself 
to, to get by. Um, I, I know we've, for me personally, I, I realized that, you know, there, there was always something that I always felt like I had to do. And kind of to Brett's point, there's always something you, you had to do everything, but you know, is that really an essential piece for us, mm -hmm. for me to be handling? Um, you know, I think we've done a great job at, at IPA of, of really dropping everything that we've had to do. So we can prove to more than enough people, I, I know we have, um, I've heard from many of you saying this to us, is that we are essential. The, the organization, what we do is essential. And I think that goes for all of you, um, whether you're dealing with direct patient care or not. But I think we've all realized there's a lot of junk in our lives, but there's so much essential things that we do. Um, and <laughs> I still think at least my last thought on this is what's helping me most right now. And, you know, I still, I, I need to go back to my office and grab, I love quotes and, and just little things and sayings. And there's just one saying that I always rely on. And, and it's just that you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And, you know, we're going to get through this. Um, we're going to get through this together. Um, and yeah, COVID-19 is a big freaking elephant to, take a bite out of, but we're, we're going to do this together. Um, and we all play a part. And I think that's what's helping me the most. Mm -hmm. I've talked yeah. a lot about how I'm, I'm going to have a hard time going back to normal because I've, <laughs> I've discovered some things that I was missing in my life because I kept myself too busy. And so I, it's going to be a struggle for me to protect that, I think, because my natural inclination is going to be, try to be to tackle all those other extra things that Anthony said are junk. Um, and I'm going to have to consciously protect the things that I've found are more important than that. Um, so that'll be my struggle coming out of this. Yeah. I'm going I think to it's interesting. Around keeping me accountable, my wife and others. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think it's great. And I, I think too, what you were talking about, Anthony and, and Brett too, I think, you know, I've heard a couple different times is like, as we get ready to rush back to the normal, um, thinking about what it is that we're rushing back to. And is it, is it all what we want to rush back to? And I think that that's going to be really important for all of us to think about and consider uh, and do that um, as we, as we do figure out what that's going to look like again, as we move out of this phase, whenever that might be. Um, so we're coming up at the end of the hour. There's a few other things I wanted to just make sure we touched on. Um, one of this is finding strength in numbers. That was the other theme of this whole session, and you've heard it a lot today. Um, but this is interesting, and for those of you students that were part of the P1 forum with the Genesis Board um, in professional engagement, you'll, you'll recognize this because it comes from the presentation that we did for you guys. Um, but it's the whole idea that like you have strength in numbers, and you've heard everybody on this call, I think, and all of the board members that have been talking, um, is that you rely on people. You find strength in those around you. Um, the, you know, the six degrees of separation, six degrees is all that separates us from every, anyone else in this world. Um, and pharmacy is such a small world that it feels like it's maybe only two or three, maybe one degree of separation, it feels like sometimes. Um, but that's important because it's, it's a network, it's on our connections and building and maintaining relationships is, is, really is really an important piece of all of this. And so I know that theme has come out as we were talking, but it's just something that I think is really important um, about trying to navigate through these times right now. I don't know if anybody wants to add on to that or speak to that idea. Yeah. Actually, Kelly, I just think, oh, go ahead, Brett. I was going to say not being afraid to ask for help. I mean, I know I've yeah. loved Anthony, Andrew Funk, people that I know uh, are in the thick of things and might know the answer. It's not, right. not being afraid to ask for help. And I don't know everything. Nobody, nobody can. So. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to add, I feel like I've, I've updated this type of slide. I think there's actually data to prove that we are now, I think it's something like 2.4 degrees of separation for anyone in the world right now because of social media. Because of social media. Yeah, I can see that. So you send me that, Anthony. What's yeah. that? Send me that information, Anthony. I'll, I'll try so to update find the slide. It. I know it's somewhere. It's important though. I mean, I think it's really important. And I think it, it really, again, we, we can't get through this. We're all in this together. Like it, it really is really critical. It's an, an important theme to all of this. Um, and we want to tie back to Zeta Cooper and we, taught, we started with Zeta Cooper and leading, and that's what this is all about, leading into the unknown, which is what Zeta Cooper really did. And Zeta's legacy, um, you know, this is on the Zeta Cooper Leadership Conference website and it's about being 
be a, be trailblazing, be collaborative, be innovative, be bold, be involved. And you heard all of those things today. Um, the folks that were talking on the phone and that joined the conversation. I mean, everybody's blazing a trail and trying to find the right path um, through all of this. Um, and all of that is leadership. And I think one thing that I have really learned is that you just have to lead from wherever you are. Um, maybe it's home, maybe it's work, maybe it's your school, you're with your classmates, with your community. Um, everyone on this call and everybody, in, including those that haven't spoke up, um, you're all leading in some way. Um, and you really, especially in these times, I think have to figure out where you can lead from and where you need to lead from for that day. Like I said earlier, there's times where I just can lead at home right now. I'm homeschooling three children and I'm <laughs> trying to manage my husband who's working from home with I do and I normally do, but we don't both normally work from home. So there's just a lot of new, there's a lot of unknown and we have to figure out what that means and what that looks like for all of us. Melissa, did you want to say anything about Zeta? Because this is part of the Zeta Conference uh, Leadership Series. Did you want to sure. tie anything together from Zeta? Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Well, I want to say thank you to everyone who participated and to Kelly and the Genesis Board for your sharing your insights and also the vulnerability that everyone shared today. I think it helps all of us to hear examples of when things didn't work so well. Fair, I can just imagine what that was like when your technology didn't work and Brett, when your um, board, when your mayor's meeting was zoom bombed, you know those were some funny things. And we're trying something new, and we're learning right along with you. And so we hope that you enjoy what we're doing this week. These series of um, examples, and like was mentioned earlier, you know Zeta lived through the Spanish flu, and she continued throughout her life to do amazing, innovative things. And so we too will continue and move on. And I really want to thank Kelly and the Genesis Board for your creativity and your insights. And we look forward to um, going through the rest and also to just let everyone know that we're here for each other, whatever that looks like as we move forward. I will say that um, there were a couple of comments. Um, Connie Connolly mentioned that she would add that leadership is also being curious. Um, she wanted to thank all of you for sharing um, your story and to help one another. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Rita Schneider mentioned that she said it was an awesome talk. talk. Um, it really makes a difference to hear all of you talk about stepping out there and knowing it's okay to be vulnerable. There is strength in numbers. Absolutely. Well, and with that, Rita, thanks for sharing that because I think um, it, it kind of goes to my last slide, which um, actually is really interesting because I was pulling up some stuff and um, when we put together the P1 forum that each of the, any of the students that were on this call have participated in with our Genesis board. We do it as part of the professional engagement series. Hopefully you remember us. Um, but um, this is the actual parting thoughts that I share that we have shared the last number of years. And um, it's about you're experiencing an innovative and trend-setting doctor pharmacy curriculum couldn't be even more true. They're being even more innovative than they were before because now they're doing it all online and they're, they're doing it and they're reaching you guys and trying to help you guys and being able to deliver that curriculum. You have access to a network of innovative practitioners. We have access to one of the top state pharmacy associations. And I actually didn't know Anthony was going to be on the phone. That was actually up there though. Um, for That's in our, our conversation with the P1s. Um, and you never know where the road will take you. So keep an open mind. And then last but certainly not least is that, that your Iowa pharmacy family wants you to succeed and we will be here to support you every step of the way. And that's what this is all about. It's about being here to share with you what we're going through and hearing from you what you're going through. And we wanna be here to support you guys and help you through um, this very difficult time. We're leaning on each other and that's what we do as a pharmacy family. Uh, I wanted Kelly, to reach out to the yep. Oh, I'm sorry, Kayla. No, I was reaching out to you. <laughs> well, I, I want to, uh, as I did yesterday, <clears throat> take a moment just to express my heartfelt appreciation. Once again, just you guys knock it out of the park. I, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by all of you and the time that you're taking, your dedication, your devotion, uh, clearly professional, but also to your families during this, this challenging time. Some of the words that uh, come to the fore with me when I start thinking about today's topic you know, I start thinking about being purposeful and, and, and what I think about being empathetic. When we start talking about leading, 
I think about calm, clear, confident, ensuring that the, that the message is that you're not wavering, uh, that, that, that you need to be, uh, it's important that, that people have a sense of clarity because I think it helps them uh, to try to the extent that you can to convey a sense of resilience that, hey, we're not, we're human beings. We have frailties. We have things that get us down and we have things that get us up. But how do you respond when somebody, when, you're, when you feel knocked down, whether emotionally knocked down or financially knocked down, professionally knocked down, whatever the, you fill in the blank. But how you respond to that, I believe is, is fundamentally important to, uh, to all of us as healthcare professionals, but especially in times when we have to exercise leadership. So I just wanted to offer those thoughts because I was sitting here absorbing all of the wonderful comments that have been shared and the life experiences that you have and the challenges you're facing either in the past or currently. And those are some of the words that jumped out in my mind that I wanted to share with all of you. But the most important two words I wanna say, well, actually four words. First of all, thank you. And the second two words are go Hawks. And with that, I'm going to sign off here. And it's back to you, Kelly. <laughs> well, that is a great way to finish. Um, and I don't know if I could say anything better, except you can see, um, Dean Latender, that I, I'm in my son's room because I had to be close to my internet. We're having some internet issues. But I hung up my tiger hawk in the background because um, you know me. I'm, I bleed black and gold, always will. Um, and um, so thank you for those remarks. I think that's a great way to finish. I couldn't, um, I couldn't agree more. Um, and thank you to our panel um, for sharing and being vulnerable and just sharing your things, you, all that you're doing. You are leaders and trailblazers and we're thankful for you. Um, and that's what Hawkeyes do. And um, I'm proud to be one, proud to be your colleague. And I wish all of you guys the best. Um, if anybody has anything else they want to share, we can take that before we leave. The only we'll thing say. I want to share before we hang up, and I hope she's still there. Uh, uh, Farah, are you still on the line? Yes. Hello. Tara, <laughs> you did. I, I just uh, participated virtually in the USP meeting. Uh, what they accomplished yesterday in that session was absolutely phenomenal. And I want to just give a huge shout out, Farah, to your leadership, the things that you helped do and pulling that all together. The rest of the USP team. I talked to Ron this evening and uh, Ron P. Vincenzo is their, their CEO. And I just want to uh, tell you how, as a, as a fellow Hawkeye, I just want to tell you how proud I was of you and the efforts that you made. But that was one heck of a meeting. And that would serve as a great template uh, for other meetings, including for us when we're thinking about taking Zeta virtual and other sorts of things. You, you just, you did, you did a phenomenal job. So kudos. Thank you. It all started with our epic failure of trying to go live about two months ago. <laughs> and so we, we could learn from it and then deliver on this. So it really brought, brought in a, a, big, a bigger team this time around. We learned from it. And that's why we did it, so that we could be on the cutting edge, bleeding edge. But I'm just so, so grateful to everyone. And Dean Latender, thank you so much for your kind words and for being a convention delegate. We're getting ready to start our five-year cycle not the 200th anniversary we were thinking of, but doing just as much impact as we did when we were founded 200 years ago. Yeah, well, Farrah, the, 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 and Anthony's on the line, um, the, some of the things that you did, even in the, the interaction between presenters who weren't in the same space at the same time and how you blended it all together was phenomenal. And I, I couldn't help but think how that might be instructive to Anthony and Kate and our IPA colleagues and putting their meeting together, Zeta Cooper conference together and other kinds of like things. I think we have a lot to learn from you. So thank you again. Thank you. Yeah, fair. We might have to connect. Hey, I'm right here. And I'm I'll, like literally old Georgetown Road for the next like five years or however long <laughs> this we quarantine goes like on. <laughs> I thought we were going to do like the Brady Bunch thing. I don't know if you guys have been on Zoom calls where you like uh -huh. pass the baton down to the person below you or whatever, and you're supposed to do it based on <laughs> your area of the camera. There's there's a lot of fun you could do with these. Oh, man. Sarah, you're going to have to share for sure. <laughs> share your secrets. 
Oh, I w yes. Okay. <laughs> Love to. Well, um, considering it's after six right now, I wanted to thank everybody who is on the call today, members of the Genesis Board. Kelly, thank you so much for your leadership. Um, Zeta Cooper Leadership Committee members, thank you. And students, faculty, staff, friends, thank you for joining us today. Um, don't forget that tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, we have the next session of We Got This. It will be um, building high performing work relationships and Michelle Williams will be leading that. We hope you guys can um, join us. Hey, Kayla, I'm sorry. I want to let everybody know right now, since most will be on that call, I'll be in a council at quote in a council of deans meeting at that time. So regrettably, that's the one uh, Genesis board activity that I have a conflict with that I just simply can't get out of. So my apologies in advance for not being able to attend and please do extend to everyone my, 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 my best regards. Will do. All right, well, with that, we'll sign off for today. I hope you guys have a great evening and we will see you tomorrow. Night all. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank Good night. you, everyone. Thank you.